Hello and welcome to this video on the shunting yard algorithm. In this video I will show the rules for the shunting yard algorithm, I will explain operator precedence, and I will demonstrate the algorithm with an example. I will also at the end show a brief Python implementation of the algorithm. In this video I expect that you understand reverse Polish notation and you understand operator polarity. I explained both of these in my previous video on reverse Polish notation. So what is it? The shunting yard algorithm converts infix notation, which is a normal maths equation, into postfix notation, which is otherwise known as reverse Polish. The algorithm is relatively simple, but it can be expanded to be used in compilers. So how then does it work? There are several rules for the shunting yard algorithm. We first start reading the infix notation, which is our input, from the left. Then, if we read a number, we must add it to the output. If we read a function, we must add it to the operator stack. If we read an operator, then we must pop the operators in the operator stack into the output, which have a precedence greater than or equal to the current operator. Then we add the current operator to the operator stack. Then for brackets, if we read a left bracket, we put it onto the operator stack. If we read a right bracket, then we pop from the operator stack until a left bracket is reached. Then we discard the left bracket. Afterwards, if the value on the top of the operator stack is a function, we must then pop it into the output stack. Finally, once we've gone through all of the infix notation input, all remaining items in the operator stack must be popped into the output. Now, these rules are quite complex, so don't worry if you don't understand them straight away, as I will go through an example later on. But first, what is operator precedent? The precedent of an operator describes its position in the order of operations. Operators with a higher precedence must be calculated before operators with a lower precedence. So what this means is that operators such as multiply and divide have a higher precedence than operators such as plus and minus which have a relatively lower precedence since multiply and divide are calculated before plus and minus. So what we can do is quantify the value for precedence for various different operators that we may find in our equation. Note that for addition and subtraction, the unary versions of those operators and the binary versions of those operators have different values for the precedence. So it is very important that we do not confuse these operators. So here we have an example. This is an equation written in infix notation, and we want to convert this to reverse Polish notation. In this equation, the operators have been denoted as unary and binary where appropriate to make it so that it's not ambiguous. Now, in this example, we have an output, an operator stack, and an input. The output and operator stacks both start as empty, so they contain nothing. Then the input contains the infix notation that we want to convert into reverse Polish. So now we start reading the infix notation from the left. And the first thing we read is a unary subtract. Since this is an operator, we push it into the operator stack. Now, the next thing we read is a 5. And since 5 is a number, we push it into the output. 
Next, we find a binary addition, which is an operator. Since binary addition has a lower precedence than the unary subtract, which is in the operator stack, so the unary subtract is pushed into the output. Then the binary addition is pushed into the operating stack. Next, we have the number 6, which simply gets pushed into the output. Now we find a binary multiplication, which is an operator. Binary multiplication has a higher precedence than binary addition, so the binary addition in the operator stack stays where it is. Then the binary multiplication is pushed into the operating stack. Next we find a 7, which simply gets pushed into the output. Then we find division, which is an operator. Binary multiplication has a precedence that is greater than or equal to division. In this case, it is equal. So then the binary multiplication is pushed into the output. Then, since binary addition has a precedence less than division, the binary addition is left in place and the division is then pushed into the operator stack. Then we find a left bracket. This is pushed onto the operator stack. Next we find a 4, which simply gets pushed into the output. Next we find binary subtract, which is an operator. Binary subtract has a precedence less than left bracket. Note that brackets are treated as having infinite precedence since they come before all other operators. So the binary subtract is then pushed to the operator stack. Then we find a 3, which is a number, so we push it into the output. Next we find a right bracket, so we pop from the operator stack into the output stack until we find a left bracket. So the binary subtraction is moved from the operator stack into the output, then we find the left bracket. Now we discard both of the brackets. Then we find a binary addition, which is an operator. Since division has a precedence which is greater than or equal to that of the binary addition operator, the division operator is pushed into the output. Then we compare the binary addition to the binary addition in the operator stack, and since the precedence is greater than or equal to, we push the binary addition from the operator stack into the output. Then finally, we take the binary addition and push it into the operator stack. Now we come across floor. Floor is a function, so it is pushed into the operator stack. Next, we find a left bracket, which is simply pushed into the operator stack. Next, we find pi, which is a number and is simply pushed into the output. Now we have a right bracket, so we pop from the operator stack into the output until we find a left bracket. In this case, there is nothing that we can pop from the operator stack into the output since we find the left bracket immediately. So we then discard the brackets. After discarding the bracket, we check the topmost item in the operator stack. And in this case, it is floor, which is a function. So, as it's a function, we pop it into the output. Now that we've gone through everything in our input and there's nothing left, we pop the remaining items in the operator stack into the output. This gives us this, which is our final answer. This program here is a Python version of the shunting yard algorithm. This program does exactly the same as what we just did in the example. That's all I wanted to cover. If you've made it this far, be sure to like and subscribe, and join the URCL Discord, which is linked in the description, as well as commenting your favourite whiteboard marker colour. Mine is red. And with that, cheerio!